Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today we're going to be making a stunning no-bake dessert that hails from Malaysia and it's called Batik Kek. It gets its name from the batik process. It's a dyeing process that uses knots on fabric and dyeing that leaves these beautiful kind of white pattern in the fabric or whatever you are dyeing. This cake is supposed to resemble that. There are just a handful of ingredients. It requires no baking. You can make it ahead and I think it would be perfect for the holidays. So let's go ahead and get started. So I mentioned that it's no bake. How is this possible to make a cake that requires no baking? Hmm. We are going to be using the cookie trick. Now, if you've seen my previous no bake cake recipes, I've done many of them. The chocolate torta, the lime layered cake with biscuits comes to mind as well. I'll put links to those videos down below. All of those recipes use cookies. It's an ice box technique. So in this case, we're going to be using Maria biscuits, which are lightly sweetened cookies. They come in a round shape, sometimes rectangular. You could also use Petit Beurre, the little French butter cookies as well. These are going to absorb the chocolate kind of mousse frosting that we're going to make and get nice and soft and become cake-like. So that's how we get the cake without any baking. Such a marvelous technique and delicious as well. And did I mention, I think I did, that you can make this ahead. So I love that too. And I will put a link down below to the original recipe that is the inspiration for today. So in my saucepan, we are going to melt some butter. It's a good amount of butter here. Bloom, 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 bloom. It's about 11 tablespoons. So melt the butter. And this cake reminds me a lot of a cake I made a few years ago, several years ago now. And it came from the Ikea Fika cookbook and it was called radiator cake. And this one looks very similar with the layers. That was a little bit different because we used a different chocolate mixture today. For the chocolate, we're going to be using Milo, which is a powdered chocolate malt drink. I had it when I was a kid, along with Horlicks and Ovaltine. My mom <laughs> would make it for us just on occasion. And it would always solidify in the tin. You know what I'm talking about? If you can't find Milo or Ovaltine, you can substitute hot cocoa powder, sweetened hot cocoa powder. So now that our butter is just about melted, we're going to add our Milo right in here. Look at that. It's a lot of Milo. Add that in there and stir it around. And our sweetened condensed milk. Yo, this is gonna be sweet. This ingredient, sweetened condensed milk, you can make so many different things with it. So many different things. All right, I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit. We don't want this too hot. We just wanna combine the butter, the milk, and the Milo all together. Look at that color. Ooh, it's like fudge. Okay, so I'm gonna use my thermometer, which I love very much, to get the temperature of this. We want this to be at 234 degrees. So I'm using my probe thermometer, it's at 93. Get everything mixed together first. Don't wanna scorch this, so keep it on kind of a medium, medium low temp. There's a lot of sugar in here. So now I've got four beautiful eggs, thank you hens. I'm going to add these one at a time to this mixture, working quickly so we don't scramble our eggs. So I'm gonna turn off the heat actually while I do that because this is at 148 degrees at the moment. Oop, got a piece of shell in there. And if I have it too high of a temperature, then our eggs will curdle and scramble and that's not what we want. We want our eggs to thicken this mixture for us, not scramble on us. Gosh, this looks beautiful already. With each addition of egg, it's reducing the temperature of this kind of fudgy mixture. Then we're gonna bring this up to temperature. Then we're gonna increase the heat to this to medium and bring it up to 234 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the softball stage. So that's when candy becomes kind of like chewy and like taffy. If you don't have a thermometer, you can simply take a spoon of this and drop it into some cold water and then feel the resulting 
ball. And if it's kind of got a soft taffy consistency, then you are successfully at the softball stage. Alrighty, now I'm gonna turn the heat back on now that I've incorporated my eggs. This is already looking thicker and beautiful. The Milo is incorporated, the eggs are incorporated, and now we need to bring it up to temp. Look at that, isn't that luscious? Ooh. I'm gonna turn this off until I get it to temp. Alrighty, my lovelies. Look how thick this has gotten. Super thick and it's supposed to be like hot fudge, but this is much thicker than hot fudge. So once it starts coming to a little bit of a sputtery boil, it was about two minutes if you don't have a thermometer. So now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of vanilla, work that in there. We want this to be wet enough so that our cookies actually turn into cake. So that's my concern, right? All right, so there's that. Now I've got this pan here. I think it's used to make bread. I think it's supposed to make pan de mie because it comes with a slid. I found this at a thrift store. I'm using this because I can fit a nice long row of my cookies inside it, but whatever dish you plan on using, loaf pan would probably work just fine too. Line it with parchment paper. It'll make it a lot easier to remove. So add a layer of this really thick stuff. It's almost like pudding at the bottom of our pan. And so some recipes I saw for this require the cookies to be crushed. And I think that makes it look more like batik. But I really liked what was shown in this recipe, which is a nice layer of cookie. So I'm using a silicone spatula to smooth that out as best I can. And then a layer of Maria biscuits. nestled right into the chocolate. So there's a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna break my biscuits just so that each layer has a full layer of cookie. Like that. Then we add more of this chocolate. Now, if you want each layer to be completely even, I suppose that you could measure the chocolate. I'm just kind of eyeballing it until it just makes a nice smooth layer. Okay. So beautiful. And just to make things extra pretty, I'm going to add some sliced almonds on top just for decoration. Okay. So now this is still quite hot. We're going to let this sit at room temperature until it cools down. And then we're going to place it in the refrigerator to cool completely. And I would let it rest overnight because remember we want those biscuits to get nice and soft. And then we will slice this up and give it a taste. All right, my lovelies, I will see you tomorrow. All righty, my lovelies, I am back. It has been a full 12 hours since I refrigerated my batik kek. So let's give it a slice and a taste. Here is the cake inside here. Beautiful, everything is nicely solidified. The parchment should help us get this out, but I'm gonna loosen it a little bit on the sides here where I didn't have some parchment completely covering the pan. Okay, now we should be able to lift it out, I hope. Yes. All right, here we go. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that was loud. Let's see what it looks like. It looks great. And I can smell the chocolate. And this set up very nicely. Look at that. <laughs> Alrighty, so we can transfer it to a nice presentation plate. But before we do that, let's give it a slice because I really want to see what it looks like in cross section. So the first slice always is one that is a test slice as I see it. Oh, but what a lovely test slice. Look at that. Very nice, very nice. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at the layers. Isn't that lovely? Mm, love it. 
And here's the slice of batik cake. Okay, fits on my presentation plate beautifully. Look at that. Woo! All right, lovelies, let's give our beautiful refrigerated no-bake cake a taste. It smells great. While I was slicing it, I did feel some crunch of the biscuits, so perhaps this could even sat longer in the refrigerator. This has sat a full 12 hours, maybe longer than overnight. I don't know if it would make a difference. Okay, itadakimasu. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. That is so good. The combination of butter and Milo powder makes it taste like a brownie. The consistency is similar to a brownie as well. It has a similar density. The cookie has a slight, slight bite to it, not much, but it has pretty much turned into cakiness. Let's have another bite. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's incredible how the cookies have softened up to resemble something cake-like. In my opinion, it's a little bit more brownie-like. It's denser, but it's not as sweet as a brownie. In terms of flavor, I feel like it's a mashup between a waffle cone from an ice cream shop and a chocolate brownie. It's kind of a mashup of those two flavors with the texture of a brownie. Mm-hmm, it's delicious. Fantastic. I thought I might be able to taste the condensed milk, I don't, it just tastes rich and sweet and creamy. I do taste a little bit of the sliced almonds on top, not enough to give it a strong almondy flavor or an almond extract flavor at all. Just a nice little crunch and just a tinge of almond. Fantastic. Easy, simple, and stunning dessert that requires almost no time whatsoever. Most of the time required for this is just resting in your refrigerator overnight. All right, Amelo, is there you have it, batik kek, absolutely stunning, simple, easy dessert to bring to a party, to make for a party. I think it'd be fantastic for a birthday cake. I feel the presentation is absolutely stunning and totally celebration worthy, and the flavor is fantastic as well. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs> now back to more important matters, which is continuing to eat my cake. Mm -hmm. Really good. Mm-hmm.